Let's do it again. Hi, Jim! All right, you're a good crowd tonight. Hey, welcome to Max Tavern. I'm part of the Color Brother, Color Brothers Comedy Improv Troupe. We used to be like Doss Fruit, but you know, the fat guy that used to be with us, he's no longer with us, so we changed our names. So we've got uh, Matthew Cutler, Kelly Cutler, Zane Cosby, and... What the fuck's your name? I'm just gonna go. Dirty Dan. And part of our improv act is we all come out here looking like Mormons. Here's my backpack. Where's your briefcase? Uh, we don't carry a briefcase if it's too heavy. It works to have to ride my bicycle. So, where's your partner? My partner, I've got four right down there. I almost lost count. Three. That's a whole sub. Yeah. Three. So they got to hold my backpack. <laughs> so they told me I need to keep it clean tonight, and I can't say the F word. So everybody, here's my F bomb. <laughs> so when I ever throw it at you and you catch it, you gotta say the F word. Fuck. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so when I tell the joke and I say mother, you've got to throw the er on it, okay? Let's practice, mother. Fucker. There you go. You're really good. You're a beaut crowd, because Deer Lodge crowd would never get that. <laughs> Like a tail on a skunk and everything like that. I got 
that white hair coming along, and I was like, start plucking the hair, plucking the hair. And I was getting tired of it. You know, plucking, it's, it's crazy. Like, women pluck their eyebrows and all that stuff. So I was thinking my gray hair was getting too bad. So one day, I looked in my refrigerator, below the oranges and the apples and everything like that. I saw some fuzzy gray plums. <laughs> yep, they had hair on them. Those plums had hair on them. Then I was thinking, oh my god, that's me. My plums are gray. <laughs> no one wants to go down their gray plums, do they? <laughs> Not really. So what I thought about my gray plums, I take care of them. And everybody tells me that Nero do the trick. Right, ladies? Nero will do the trick. <laughs> All the guys up here are saying, no, 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 no. They've had the same experience as me. Nero burns. <laughs> It's not a pleasant effect. The old boys, they shrivel up a little bit, and they get all red, nasty looking. Oh yeah, they tighten up, and they're bad. So, you know, I think I was going to try just for men, so I could color them up and everything, and make them a little bit younger looking. <laughs> but it didn't work. They just... The color wore off, and then there were like salt and pepper, and they didn't look very uh, dignified or anything like that. So I break out the old race, or, you know, landscaping. <laughs> yeah. 50 years old, and I decided to manscape. It's not a pleasant, pleasant thing to do. All right. The John Deere manscaping? I don't understand. I don't understand. A tractor? Yeah. Uh, a tractor, no. It wasn't a weed eater either because those little boys could take that. Anyway, so I went ahead, got the razor out, and I'm in this shower, and I'm like lathering up. Put some shaving cream on. Then I take out the razor, and I'm like ready to go, and I said, oh no. Hey, you're going to have to use it. You have to get used to gray hair because I'm not going to tolerate that razor close to me. That only lasted for two minutes. And hair's gone, right? Ladies, you have to shave your legs more than once a week. You have to shave your legs how long? Not since Christmas? Because it's winter, you need that extra warmth. That's, I've heard that a lot. Women let their hair grow during the winter because they need that extra warmth. Yep. <laughs> you don't care if a guy doesn't care. Guys don't care if they want to get any. Alright! <laughs> <laughs> I like this audience participation because it puts guys in their place. Hey, if your woman doesn't shave her legs, too bad for you because you ain't going to get any. <laughs> Let me tell you what. We may be the king of our castle, but the women control our zipper. That is a fact. So let's talk about one more thing. That's near and dear to my heart. Meth and Fetamine. <laughs> I have to deal with methamphetamine every day. <laughs> Not that I want to, but I go through pee once in a while after midnight. Yeah. And I go by that uh, town pump on Montana Platte. <laughs> after midnight. And the name of that is called Tweaker Tees. <laughs> Why? Because all the tweakers go there after midnight. I know this. I won't tell you how I know this, but I know this. I'm not a tweaker. I got all my teeth. All right. I don't have pock marks on my face. My hair is not greasy. But then I thought, at one time, I'm not a singer. I can't carry a tune. As all these people attest, I am not a singer at all. And I'm kind of upset with myself because I'm not a singer. Every one of you heard the song Come Together by the Beatles? Who has not heard the song 
come together by the Beatles? Raise your hand. Oh, come on, you old people have heard it. You grew up with us on the top ten. What the hell are you talking about? So, I asked one of my younger members down there to try and get me a karaoke version of Come Together. Yeah, and they just blew me off. They said, oh man, figure it out yourself. So, I'm going to ruin your eardrums and I'm going to try and make my own song up about the same beat as Come Together. All right? And it's going to be terrible. All right? I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, it's going to be terrible. But I'll try. Here comes old Method. He's a tweak and he's scratching. He's got greasy hair. Pop mark face. Scares the little children with his black old teeth. Come together right now. Over me. Pretty good start, huh? Your F bomb. My F bomb. Who stole my F bomb? Right there. Give me my F bomb. Yeah. Well, you finish. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally. Oh, finally, finally. That's our private. That's CRS. I can't remember it. Yeah. Hey, so we got a table back there. I hope you're enjoying everything. I'm not sure how much time I get left because this guy up here is supposed to be timing me. But he's from Deer Lodge, Montana, and you know they all can't tell time. You're at 13 minutes. You're at 13. I'm at 13 minutes, lucky 13. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He's be our improv group will be fired if he can't count past. Okay, sure. Our next guy is the one, the only, the youngest member of the crowd, barely out of diapers! I can carry that on a long time. Welcome, Matthew from 
everything that you can fend yourself off with a prisoner. They'll take your cell phone, your wallet, your belt buckle, your shoe, maybe not your shoelaces, but you get what you get what I'm saying. So we go in there and we're with a female nurse, we're just walking around, and she's like, by the way, uh, yeah, we're 60 staff members short today. I'm like saying 60, because like if this is a freaking teacher, then that means like one of these each 60 people have to take care of at least 30 prisoners. So he said, if my math is correct, that's 5,000 prisoners. <laughs> if you're good at math, that didn't make sense. <laughs> Anywho, so, so me and Kelly are going, going through the prison, and first we go to get to the low side. Okay, this is the low side, where the low, uh, you know, the low, the, the low offending criminals go. So me and Kelly are there, and I'm looking around, and I was like, Jesus. Okay, these dudes are out of their cell, walking around in bathrobes. Uh, one of the guys is watching freaking college football. Uh, they can go out and heat up burritos and shit and all this stuff. And I was like, playing Xbox in their jail cells and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what do I have to do to get in the low side? Like, what's, what's the minimum crime? Because I don't want to go any higher, but what's the minimum crime I can do without fucking it up and going to high side or max? I need to get into this place because that's better than my fucking life. Nurse guards. This nurse. This nurse. Anyway, so we move into high side. So high side is kind of the same thing, but at the same time, these are criminals that have, you know, reoffended or done something that's worse than the low side. Obviously, it's kind of the same thing. They can watch TV and all this stuff. But when we went there, it was uh, cell time. So it means they were all out of their cells, whatever that's called, recess. I don't fucking know. <laughs> You know, staring at them like freaking apes in the zoo. So uh, the uh, lady that was with us nudges me and she's like, hey. I was like, yeah, what's up? She's like, hey, you see that guy over there? I was like, uh, yeah. She's like, yeah, that guy's staring at you? Yeah. He likes you. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I've seen this many times before. He has a crush on you. And I was like, uh, two or over? Maybe? You know, I don't even need to see. If there's another side outside of high side, I don't need to fucking see it. Because if I'm going to be walking around in this fucking prison for the rest of the night, I'm going to be clenching my butthole. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. You're inside walls, but you feel the most unsafe that you've ever felt. So after high side, guess where we go to next? Maximum security. All right, these are the really bad dudes. I don't even want to look it up because it'll probably give me nightmares for freaking years. Anyway, um, the only thing I can say about Max is the dude that was watching the whole freaking place is in a cubicle. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a DJ and you know doing his shit. Anyway, and he operates. He operates whether the cell is open or don't open. So, so we're looking at Max, and we get pretty close to the cells, as close as you can get for a freaking tour. And the people in Max, I swear to God, you look through their black eyes, and you'd see nothing. Honest to God, it's like they have no freaking soul. They stare at you the entire time. Now, I felt like the fucking ape in the zoo, and I'm like, get me out of here. So, we leave there, and we're walking through the yard, just walking past prisoners, like it's cool, I'm scared shitless. Uh, we walk past this guy, and I was like, I know that guy. That guy is from my home fucking town. I was like, that is the karate teacher child molester. <laughs> Cool, 
hut safe, right? Cafeteria. Everyone just, you know, uh, you know, eating and shit. And I thought, oh shit, there's forks and knives and fucking spoons. Who knows what a prisoner could do with a spoon? Anyway, um, so we're in, we're, we're in there, we're in there, and um, so there's like probably I want to say about 60 prisoners all going through the mess line, sitting down and eating their chow and all this bullshit. So they're sitting down eating their shit, and I look, I look across, and I was like. Okay, you know, I was asked the tour guy, I said, hey, so, so who's on duty right now? Like, who's here to protect us? She's like, oh, that guy right over, right over there. So I see a, a guy in the distance, some fat dude with a freaking prison uniform on, eating macaroni and cheese with a freaking uh, nightstick. I was like, do you allow guns in here? No. So I said, that motherfucker's going to protect us? He's going to freaking protect us? That's what I was thinking. I don't think I said it out loud. I don't want to be too loud. You know, you know, start to write it in prison or anything. So, um, so anyway, um, so I asked her. I asked her. I said, okay, okay, cool. So I asked her. So, so say if something happened, like if these sixty prisoners would say attack me, my brother in this group, say what would happen? Like how how quick would it get for you know how quick would it be for a SWAT team to get here? You know, with guns and shit, you know, powerful shit to blow people away. And she said, oh, about five to ten minutes. And I thought in my head, I was like, that's a long fucking time. I can't even last that long on porn. You know, it's like, five to ten minutes? These freaking prisoners would make me gay in five to ten minutes. You know? <laughs> Needless to say, I did not get raped that day. Who can say that? Okay. Years. We finally moved out at the ripe old age of 37. But, but at this point, at this point, we moved into our own place, which is right across the street from the courthouse. We had a church across the alley. Then we had the local paper. Then we also had the jail. So I said, if we fuck up anything, get into trouble at our house. We have the courthouse there. We have the jail. You can read about yourself in the paper. Then you can go and repent for your sins at the church. Okay. So we move into this place. We move into this place, and um, you know, it looks like it looks like most of it was built. Then uh, the 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 yeah, newer part was like a hidden room they built for their retarded son. So naturally, I picked that room. So anyway, so anyway, Kelly, Kelly, and me and my roommate get to this house. My best friend Jace gets the biggest room because he has a job. Money, so he gets the biggest room, he's paying the most. Kelly gets the second biggest room because he's the older brother. I get the room left to me. So I walk into this place, and there's lime green walls. It looked like something that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer just abducted his last victim in. So I look at the room, and I'm like, okay, I'll live here. Okay, this is, this is, this is my place. This is my fucking place. Which is weird. We all had different rooms, but we all slept in the same bed, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Uh, so anyway, we're living at this place, and Kelly calls me up one night, and he says, Hey, dude, what's up? I said, nothing. You know, at this point, I'm a single guy. I said, hey, nothing. You know, it's a Tuesday night. He's like, hey, guess what? He's like, what? He's like, I'm bringing some pussy over. <laughs> so I'm like, cool. <laughs> you know, all right, cool, man. Single guy living it. So my brother shows up, and I'm expecting girls, and you know the girls. He usually brings over. I'm not expecting much, but but he shows up with not girls, but a fucking tuxedo cat. That's his version of pussy. Now, if anyone who read anything about a tuxedo cat will know that they. Once they move into your house, they will take over your fucking place. I'm not even joking. Like, if the telemarketers call I'll, and they say, Hey, I want to speak to the master of the house, I'll hand it to my fucking cat. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so this cat, so this cat, the only thing it freaking cares about is shitting, eating, and sleeping. And it does a lot more sleeping than it does the other two. So, feeding time, 
comes at like, well, according to this cat, six in the morning. Okay, six in the morning. And he will wake you up and bash your fucking door down like SEAL Team 6 trying to go after an Osama Bin Laden. I'm not even joking. If this cat is hungry, he'll bust your freaking door down. So, with that being said, um, I'm sitting there in bed, and I was like, a single guy at this time, wake up with some massive, what do we call it, boys? Morning wood? Yeah. Wake up with some massive morning wood, and I was like, okay, there's, there's two ways for this to go away. Okay, I'm, I'm in my lime green room, so I'm like, okay. So there's two ways for this to go away. So I grab my bottle of Vaseline. All right, lock my door, do up a little porn. Next thing you know, I am stroking Grandpa's donkey. Okay? So what do you think I know? Next thing, the cat is fucking banging at the door. Because guess what? It's also feeding time. Okay, it's feeding time. So I'm yelling at the cat while I'm, you know, doing my business in my bed. Shut the fuck up! Oh, baby, got a perfect nipple placement, baby. Seriously, shut the fuck up! We got an hour till breakfast. So anyway, it gets so bad because you can't do that and do anything else. So finally, I open the fucking door, and the only way to get this fucking cat out of my room is to haul his ass downstairs and close the door, then he's somebody else's problem. Anyway, so he is just scratching at this door, so I'm finally like, you know, with my hand on my cock, open the freaking thing. What? And I scared him with that. Because I screamed, what so loud? That cat bolted, not out, but into my room, and he knocked down what I had for covering my window was a big blanket. He knocked that down, and what do I see? Is a big fucking cross from the church across the alley. I'm not even shit yet. I wish I could make that up. So, so man, I could actually hear the voice of God saying, put on your pants, get your life together, go get a job. So I finished, said a prayer, and went and found a little job. Um, our timer guy left, so that was good. Um, so just a couple quick more stories for you. So um, at that point, me and Kelly did have jobs. He was a music teacher in Deer Lodge, and I was, uh, what the fuck did I do? Um, I worked as a teacher in Drummond. I put in my three years, people, and I'm done. It's like the military. Put in my three years. I'm a reserve teacher now, because that's all I can take with those little motherfuckers. Seriously, seriously. One time, I was, I was an aide. I was an aide, right? I think this happened in Drummond. I was an aide professional for the special ed teacher or something like that. Anyway, um, I'm reading this story to this kid. And any of you who are parents, I am not a parent, but I just know kids are fucking assholes in the sense, in the sense that they will be completely and blatantly honest with you. So I'm reading, you know, Hop on Pop or whatever, or he might be reading, I don't know. Anyway, he looks at me after the story, he's like, your teeth are yellow. <laughs> And what are you going to say back? My initial thought in my head was, Fuck you, your head's way too big for your body. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my initial thought, but I, you can't say anything because you're in a school or you're going to get fired, you know? Or you might, unless it's a tattletale, you might, but, um, so, you know, there's nothing you can do except go home, look in the mirror, rethink your life, try to lift your face up like walking Phoenix and the Joker and make yourself smile. Is that how kids fucking affect me? I swear to God. So anyway, um, so with that being said, I got out of teaching, did my job, then I started my own home business. So I have a home business where, say, you bring me your old home VHS tapes or whatnot, and I will convert them to freaking uh, DVD for you, put them digitally so you have them forever. I'm not trying to sell you something right now, I swear to God. So anyway, I get some weird shit, because I get some shit from Butte, get some shit from Anaconda, get some shit from Drummond, that's some weird shit, but mostly it's home movies and, you know, Christmas 95 with Grandpa and all this shit. You know, and I don't necessarily watch them, I press play, record, then go play video games. It's the easiest fucking job in the world, I swear to God. 
Um, so someone from Butte, or I want to say Opportunity or Warm Springs, brings me a bunch of these old ass reels. Old ass reels. You know, the old film reels that you can't do anything with. So I have a machine that takes those reels and goes through clip by clip. All right, so you can kind of see what's going on. Like I said, I don't watch them, but you can kind of see what's going on clip by clip, because when it's done, I'll put that in a full movie, and you can see actually what they're freaking uh, recording. Anyway, those take like four to six hours. So I'm saying, that's a lot of video. Uh, anyway, so I'm getting this old man's tapes, and I'm noticing, I'm like, wait a second, is that, is that porn right there? I'm not even joking, on these, on these like old, old ass 1950s tapes, it's like, is that porn right there? So, so I wait, I wait, I play some more video, I wait, wait for the thing is done, then I replay it, and sure enough, you know, we're watching Christmas and birthdays, and next thing you know, there's a big dick flying across the stage. I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to keep that in there for Grandma's sake. <laughs> anyway, uh, people, I just have one more song for you tonight. It's about the Irish Times, sort of. Now I will get off the stage. You've been a brilliant crowd for me. Thank you, everyone. I will sing a song about the Irish Times, and we'll call it a night. We'll get one else in the hall. We'll get Dirty Dan up here. He's been nervous as fuck. Look, he got to get Irish Times in Butte, Montana. Nice. I woke up in the backseat of a car. My friends were driving me to the bar. I didn't know it was March 17. And if you're from Butte, you know what that means. <laughs> and all my friends say, let's get drunk in Butte on St. Patty's Day. <laughs> Boobies are on the wall. <laughs> so I have a better idea. Let's go to Silver Bowl Pizza. <laughs> and all my friends say, let's go to the Irish Times on St. Patty's Day. Shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> Good laughing. Nice. 
fun. That's a serious shit. I pee like 20 times a night. I'm fucked up. So let's give a shout out to Max Tavern for letting us do this shit here, huh? Let's give a round of applause. Yeah. We are some ugly motherfuckers. So to let us in the building and do this shit is just, it's phenomenal, you know? This guy looks like Pablo Escobar. He's got like 10 warrants out for the rest, you know? He's like one of my best friends. Like, Kelly, I know you're into boats and shit, but goddamn, we're just into common. He snorted fucking flour downstairs. I'm like, dude, that's not Colombian Bam Bam. God damn it. How many times I gotta tell you this shit, man? Yeah. If it's Coke, I'll know it, dude. I was a canine unit on the JV squad. <laughs> for real, dude, yeah. No, not for real, I'm just joking. Jesus, guys. So before we get this going, uh, I gotta call a guy up. His name's Lester Lamb. I think his middle name is Silence of the, but let's keep the Hannibal jokes to a fucking limit here. Come on up, Lester. Come on. Let's give Lester a hand, everybody. Come on. Come on up. You need help? I got you, buddy. So Lester has uh, stage four cancer. This is probably gonna be the last show uh, for uh, for the guy. So um, his son gave me the go ahead to roast him, and I just I got some morals, man, and I just can't do it. It's like, yeah, man, go ahead and roast my dad. He's got cancer. I'm like, dude. I sin, but uh, I still go to church. Like we dress like Mormons for a reason. We're more, we're half Mormon, right? <laughs> so uh, his son's supposedly our number one fan. His name is Lil Ricky. Uh, Ricky's 28 years old, uh, still at home and all that good stuff. So this all got started because I got drunk in the kitchen one night, and started doing Hulk Hogan videos, and it just kind of turned into a phenomenon. And uh, his son's like our, he's our go-to guy. Oh my god, man, that was so funny. I'm like, dude, you know drugs I was doing at the time I started, you know, and now. I'm supporting I'm like, well, whatever, I guess. It's your guys' fault. But uh, we signed a shirt for him here. It's a Hulkamania shirt. I want to touch. This is my dude. This is where it all started. Drunk off cold smokes in a kitchen in a goddamn housing apartment. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Why are you even here? You know? Don't you have jobs? A real show to go to? Speaking of that, I gotta sit, uh, send that shout out. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey's coming to town in a couple weeks. There's some guys in the building right now. Uh, Kevin Shields and Nick McDaniel, they're gonna be involved in the show as well. So if you like this stuff, you're probably gonna like that stuff too. It might be worse uh, as far as like the X-rated stuff goes, because Shields gets down, you know what I mean? And McDaniel's got what's called the rape fire. You don't wanna fuck with it, just leave it alone. They're good dudes, so if you guys are into this show, check that out, that's, gonna, that's a big show for Butte. Uh, Kevin Shannon's also involved in that. Give him a holler. So, uh, uh, here, uh, <laughs> Lester Lamb. You, you hung out here. with my kids and you did drugs? <laughs> you hung out with my kids and you did drugs? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna take the Clinton on this one. <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with your son. <laughs> Hillary, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't want to get Epstein, and I was just telling a joke, so please, uh, please forgive me. Um, so, this shirt's for you, buddy. That's for Ricky. Let's give it up for Lester. Uh, silence of the Lamb. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Oh, man. So, I I gotta, gotta get into this, how this all started. Uh, who said receding hairline? I just heard it. That's fucked up. Alright, alright. Let's keep the receding like this is eight years of hair growth right here. Fuck Nair, fuck all that other stuff. This is like pride. This is all I got left. I can't even grow pubes right anymore. I'm serious, man. They're all like, like mangy and shit. I'm missing passes. I'm like, fuck, man. Every time I wipe my ass, I'm like missing a patch of fur. It looks like someone just shaved a wolf in my toilet. That's fucking new. I think that's cancer. Me and Lester got a lot in common. I'm sorry, Lester. Dude, you got cancer. I can't be 
Petrovsky, but goddamn, your son gave me the green light. It's just hard. Fuck. I'm not hard. It's just hard to. You know. <laughs> So uh, how we all came together was uh, kind of like the normal notebook story, you know, it's kind of your typical love story. Uh, I was a homeless guy living in a Honda Civic, and I need some friends to do a comedy show, and uh, Dirty Sanchez and the boys here were, were ready to go. He's half black, by the way. Kelly is half black. Just in case you're wondering. Dumb. Yeah, he was a dumb. Was dumb. <laughs> Anyways, so in high school, Matt used to roast. I mean, God, it was constant. I have, I have people in here that credible witnesses to this. Matt was ruthless to me. He was always like reciting uh, metal, you know, like don't fall, pick it in my face, in my fucking face. He was always in my face, like fuck, fuck you, Dan. What? What? What are you gonna do? Like he was Scarface. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, man. Jesus Christ. I am, dude. This is a new shirt. You just spit on it. <laughs> We're getting ready for a game, dude. I was the skinny fat kid in high school, man. And, uh, you know, the long arm fucking big belly. Like, oh, God. What was the play again? 38 ISO, damn. 38 ISO. On two. I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> Hold on a second. So the ball's going to who? Wait a minute, whoa, 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 we didn't talk about this in practice. Game's on the line, dude. And I'm sweating tough, like, I, I, like I'm getting fucking interviewed by the FBI, you know? Like, I have no idea what happened to Epstein. I have no idea. Jesus. So I'd want all my fat ass back to the bench, because that's where I belong in football, dude. Seriously, man. I was out of breath thinking of plays. Like, holy shit, a Hail Mary, that's a lot of run, dude. That is a lot of wasted energy, man. You guys look good. Let's go get district champions and stuff. Yay. Yeah, Class B, we're all going to make it. We never made it. Look at us. Look what I'm doing now. This beats selling my body at a truck stop. <laughs> No, but for real though, when you see daddy and walking in high heels, mind your own fucking business. <laughs> Rent's gotta get paid somehow, dude. My landlord doesn't give a shit. Like, man, you're $800 short. I'm like, hey man, I got an infection going on. That, uh, the guy didn't tell me, and they're supposed to tell you if they have something. That's a law, right? That's a law. You're supposed to. Hey. I want to talk to you for a second. No, you're big, dude. Get the fuck out No, and then uh, Kelly used to be my substitute teacher. He filled in for his dad, and it was... <sighs> dude, I, I used to have anxiety attacks about Kelly being my sub. Because I'm a dumb dude. I'm dumb. Right, let's just get that out of the fucking picture right now. Like, I do a lot of stupid shit. And I don't know how I get myself into situations that I'm like, holy shit, this is too far gone. I have no phone lines to call. I'm about to get raped. So, something bad's about to happen to my body. And Kelly grabs that with full force, man. I mean, there's just no... So in class, Kelly's like, does anybody have any questions? Any more questions on the serious topic? I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be raising my hand. I'm going to raise my hand anyways. Kelly, uh, he's like, it's, it's actually Mr. Color to you, Dan, but... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead with the with what you're gonna say. And I'm like, did the Indians really dig the Grand Canyon? And he just he would always stare at like a, a stationary object, never answer me. I just man. You know what? Yeah, anybody else? Does anybody else have a question? I'm like, well, I was actually serious about that. So <laughs> them Indians used to work hard, dude. So I was like, well, that Grand Canyon's big and those guys put in the work, so I, I had uh, <laughs> find out it's fucking water. <laughs> Fuck you, Emotion. <laughs> Jesus. So you guys having a good time? You ready to go? <laughs> that was... <laughs> so 30's coming in hot on me. <laughs> Jim, you're out of the conversation. Now. 30 was 
like 80 years ago to you, buddy. Like, you just take the low road on this one, pal. I got her from here. So a lot's happened in my 20s, and I've, I've loved every minute of it, you know? It's been a great ride. Well, I, that's questionable. Uh, for the most part, though, uh, I got a seven-year-old son coming up in March. He'll be, uh, you know, I'll be going on seven. Wait on kids. Wait on kids. I, uh, <laughs> he was three years old. We were in a, a grocery store in Deer Lodge. And he comes up to me and he's like, Dad, I, I, I cram my pants. And I was like, all right, buddy, no big deal. When a kid tells you they shit their pants, you change them right away. And I'm going to get elaborate on this a little bit like as I'm going, but you change that diaper right then and there. I don't care what you're doing. Oh, you're in a bar mitzvah? I got a shitty diaper, dude. I'm changing. He double cuffed his hands into his ass and pulls them out. He's like, see? in human waste, and he's flicking, flicking, he's like, yeah, like, oh, no, oh, God, ah. So I set him down, because it's like natural reaction, I thought, like, oh, God. The amount of money I paid for in cereal that day could have helped an Ethiopian family for 10 years. I'm not playing, this is a real shit story, man. He ran down the halls like it was Chuckery in Child's Play, just like, <laughs> Slapping cereal boxes like he was a goddamn postman. Just pat, pat, pat. Shit, shit, shit. There was poop everywhere. It was a poop frenzy. I'm yelling for an adult like, somebody help me! Somebody help me! Why is this happening to me? Oh my god. You were so cute five minutes ago and now you're coming to shit. So after that, $800 later and cereal, See, Dad? You should change me. <laughs> Couple weeks ago, fast forward in time, we're in Walmart. <laughs> oh, man. I'm still feeling the pain from this. He's got this thing about hitting people in the wiener. It's like his newest thing. It's the coolest thing to do. Oh, Dad's in pain. <laughs> Dad's spitting up a kidney. Let's hit him again. That's great. I mean, everyone's having a good time. I'm reaching for like Q-tips and he just screams out wiener smash and drops me like a bad habit. So I'm on the ground like sweating like I'm getting over a heroin binge. I'm like, oh my God. And I instantly burn out. I'm like, buddy, you don't hit me where you come from. And I, I was like, oh shit, there goes the stork. And he's like, huh. I thought I came out of mom's pee pee. <laughs> and walks off, he fucking leave me, I, like, I'm on the ground, and that's all he said. <laughs> Unreal, man. You're seven. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. So he wants to get into a, like, he wants to buy a dog. He's all about this dog kick, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I've had enough poop on me for a mandingo party to prove of. You know what I'm talking about. You guys know what a mandingo party is. I don't need to get into detail about that. But So, my only question is with dogs, is why are they the only ones allowed to be perverts? You know what I'm saying. They're the only ones that you can literally, like, they'll hump your leg. You'll scream. They get a melt bone, a belly rub. Oh, they had a rough day. I'm talking like Pomeranians taking on Great Danes. <laughs> what the hell? Like that doesn't even scientifically add up. How are you? You need a stool, little buddy? You're having a rough day? You want to go puff one out with uh, with old Big Tito there? If I'm in prison, I'm not going to look at the baddest thing. They're like, yep, yeah, I'm going to get that leg, dude. That leg is mine, man. It's on, dude. It's fucking old. <laughs> Like, do I need a front tail? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what, I don't get what it is. Just because the dog's furry and shit. But anyways, man, we get into it. And uh, my buddy, he's not here tonight, surprisingly. He's probably passed out on the couch. But uh, he's like, hey, man, uh, I'm thinking about getting a dog, too. I was like, you know, we can get a whole shopping cart full of dogs. In some states, this is legal. Put them into people's cars and kick the shit out of their windows to save them. We can save the dog. If they're in distress, like, oh man, oh, he's puffing, puffing. Bam! Woo! Oh. You 
you look good, you look twice as good. You're holding a puppy. So if you see me walking around Walmart with a shop car full of dogs, sorry about your car, I'm having a bad day. I'm turning on smashing pumpkins, dude. Sorry, man, I hope you got insurance, but uh, yeah, my credit score came out bad. Sorry about your Lexus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Man, after I left Max the last time, I ended up at this college party, and the things that are cool now just blow me away. What happened to sitting around a campfire, smoking a bowl of weed, and freaking drinking a beer like a normal person? Now they're into this butt chugging shit. Never in my life have I had a bad enough day to have been like, hey, KJ, uh, can you shove this up my ass? Not deep it, dude. I don't want to taste it in my mouth. I want foam coming out of me like I have rabies. <laughs> what happened? What happened? God, I'm so sorry to the younger generation. If that's cool, eating Tide Pods and, and sniffing a rubber and having a beer shut up your ass, then call me out, man. I will read a Reader's Digest magazine any day and go to bed at 8 o'clock all the time, man. How is that cool? I just don't get it. Like, I'm sitting at this party and all these kids have new white shoes. They were one hood away from a KKK party. <laughs> Seriously, I'm looking around like, what the hell? And I'm wearing these Chuck Taylors like, Dude, do you even ski? And they're talking about, talking about cocaine. And I'm like, I'm 260 pounds, I don't ski. Fuck. What the hell kind of question is that? Do you, do you write? Do you read? You want me to ask you some weird questions, dude? It's 4 o'clock in the morning by this time. And they're like, oh man, dude, Kyle did such a good beach hug the other day. I'm like, I thought it was a new way of shotgunning a, a beer. I, that's what I thought at first. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> oh, man. No, no. So this is my apology to the younger generation. I can't believe that stuff is cool. I mean, storing a condom? When has it ever been a good idea? I'm like, I'm gonna put that latex up my nose. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Let's uh, let's take the rib out tonight. I'm feeling crazy. <laughs> Jesus, age, man. You thought if you didn't listen to Little John and the East Side Boys in high school when I was going to school and sitting around a campfire with an old shitty Bronco, you weren't cool. You weren't going to the party, Matt. You can verify that. There's plenty of parties I got kicked out of. I had a Geo Metro. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, recently I've been going on some weird dates. Weird, weird dates. <laughs> I don't even know how to get into this. I don't even know if I want to talk about this anymore. So, before I get going on that, let's, uh, let's bring it back because I'm not ready to tell that story yet. Seven years ago, I'm at a I'm at a Helmville rodeo. Have you guys ever party with cowboys? Yeah. Or want to be cowboys? <laughs> Don't ever party with people who are legit cowboys who drink eight seconds in Pendleton like it's water. Horrible shit is coming down your way, man. Horrible shit. There was nothing good that came out of the story. So I'm sitting in Helmville and they're like, hey man, we're gonna go to this auction. And I'm like, all right, I, I'm dumb. I've, we've already covered this. I'm super fucking dumb. Look at my teeth. You see this? Would you trust me with your kids? No, you wouldn't. I'll answer for you. <laughs> so we're at this auction, and I think, I'm thinking it's a live concert, because it says auction live. So I'm like, all right. I've never heard of this guy before, but let's, let's do it. You know, let's take it to the next level. So me and some of the wildest, wide herb looking sons of bitches you can picture are with me. I was drunk by 10 a.m., mind you. So this guy is rambling off, and I'm, I'm the only one that's pumped up for this guy. I'm the only one, woo, yeah, auction, sweet, fucking rodeo, goddamn concert, do a hammer drum, front row, dude. And all of a sudden, they're like, dude, just, just keep it down. I'm like, no, man, I, you know who I am. Dude, I'm, I'm going to take this down hard. Hard. It's new by this time. This guy gets up on the stage and he's like, Alrighty, first item up for sale. We got a glass pony. Holy shit. 
Oh shit, this has the white Buster Rhymes of country. I'm freaking out at this point, because I'm so hammered. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no body control. Have you guys been that drunk where you're like violently drunk? You're like, arms are flaring. Okay, this song's about me. That's where I was at. And I have this guy's going off and he's like, have a game, you got a five, 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 so I'm thinking I'm the coolest man in the house, you know, because I kept raising my hand and my parents like, dude, keep your hands down. You don't even know what you're doing. I left with $900 worth of shit that I, I'm no cowboy. I had a 10-gallon hat, I had spurs, and I had assless chaps. And I'm walking in and thinking, I'm like, you guys are so dumb. Look what I got. Look what I got. I won prizes at this concert. You guys suck, dude. I had to write, I didn't realize there was a check. They're like, is this going to be good? I'm like, oh. Your old lady said it was all right. So in the mouth, I was like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he was a big dude, man. So I was like, just give me the chaps, dude. Let's get out of here. God damn it. That was the worst mistake I've ever done. Don't ever go to something you're not 100% aware of. Auction live means loans for Dan and bad credit score. So take that for a grain of salt. So the two worst dates I've been on. How many of you guys are on a date tonight? Nobody? Okay, nobody? Perfect. Uh, <laughs> first date was a couple years ago, and I was on a blind date. I am getting told all this stuff, saying, you know, this girl works at Northwestern Energy, she's great, she's got a good head on her shoulders. All right, yeah, sure. You know, Pornhub's kind of getting old, so let's just try this out. We get into the date, the first five minutes, I'm like, no more jokes. She had the witch's cackle laugh. Like, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, yep. Definitely gonna keep it bland. We go back to her place, she's like, you ready to come inside? And I was like, I'm doing the whole fake yawn thing to try to get out of early. You guys have all been there. I see a, I see a couple people in the crowd that are like, oh, it's 7.30, yeah, I got church in the morning. Uh. So I was definitely, I was definitely at the point of where I was like double yawn. I'm like, oh, yeah. And she's like, well, just come inside and have a drink. So I get in there, it looked like someone shaved my back, put it into a damn leaf blower, and let it explode in this house. The amount of fur that was on the wall for this herd of cats that I seen, I was like, oh my god. I started instantly sneezing. <laughs> Well, one is bad, but 20? Now, lady, we got a problem. So, she hands me a Benadryl. I'm drinking on top of it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm sure this is safe. Sure. OSHA approves. We start getting in, like, we start talking, and I hear the noise of a cat that sounds, I mean, they're just like, 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 it was stalish. I'm like, what the hell was that? She's like, oh, that's Tuffy. This cat comes walking around Garfield looking son of a bitch. He assumes a position that he's been in many, many times before. Let's just get that with right now. She starts petting his stomach and working her way down to, you know. And I'm watching, I'm like, oh, oh, Jesus Christ, she is jerking off her cat. She is touching her cat right in This is a true story. These guys know this happened. And so the cat's purring, and it sounds like a damn helicopter trying to land. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, I wish I could purr like that. I can't even tuck my own rope and get off like that, man. This cat's like having a seizure, you know, fucking, fucking tail, like everything is just into it. I'm like, God damn, I felt like I was intruding. And she just stared, oh, you wanna touch Tuffy? I'm like, you know what, sister, that thing you're doing with the cat, I think I'm out, I think I'm gonna go. If there was a hotline for uh, bestiality, I would've called it 10 times that night. I'm like, whoa, 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 911, you, you don't care? Okay, hey, there's a chick touching her cat, I'm on a date. Uh, so the... <laughs> So the second worst date I've ever been on, some of you guys have heard this. I'm in Missoula. God damn it, I don't even want to tell it. Oh, tell it! Tell it! I don't even want to tell this story, it's so bad. 
I'm in Missoula. I, I, I get on Tinder. I got friends that are like, hey man, get back out there. Check out what the dating world's like. And I'm like, I don't know, man. The cat lady really put a pretty good tone on my sex life and the cat outnumbered me and I just, I'm, I'm okay with staying home alone. So I end up going on this date in Missoula and at first I meet this girl and I was like, oh my god, there's no way this girl's into me. She's a solid 12. I'm a three on a good day. If I brush my teeth, dude, I'm a three and a half. Don't deny it. <laughs> Let's be real. So I'm all into this. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta play every card I have. You know? And we go to Famous Dave's, I'm drinking entirely too much because I'm trying to riddle off some lines that I don't even know what they mean. So we end up going to the new Joker film and I'm pulling like Ron Jeremy shit in the movie theater. I'm like, oh, you want a lap dance? Check this out, girl, you like that? Mm-hmm, yeah, I've worked these hips. Man, you want me to play Genuine Pony? What's up, huh? Yeah, you don't, you don't like that? Okay, well, let's go. So, <laughs> We're right to the point of where I'm like, okay, we're, it's happening. We're getting it on. I'm, I'm all jacked about this. And I go to the bathroom to take one of those pre-sex pees. You, everybody here knows what I'm talking about. You can't pee in the middle of sex. It ruins everything. <laughs> like, at that point, she's like, you know what? I'm just tired and I'm feeling weird. And you just, all you did was take to get piss. It was a 10 second piss. How are you so turned off? I'm ready to go like a little Caesar's pizza. I'm fucking hot and ready, man. I'm like sweating, ready for a stroke. Like eyes rolling in the back of my head and shit. I'm passing out. I'm, let's do this. So I'm in the bathroom and I'm looking at this piss stained floor and I'm like, I'm gonna do some push-ups. I can't go in there looking like I'm nipping out harder now than I was then. And uh, <laughs> she comes up next to me and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh my god, you're gonna get his caught. And it's always been a fantasy to have bathroom sex. I don't care what anybody says. I think that's cool as shit. It's hot as fuck, it's sporadic. It's all over the place. My grandma's in here, I think, and she would approve of that. But uh, she knows what I'm talking about. Grandma's done some down ass shit. But, so we get, she comes next to me and starts peeing. I look over, I'm like, what are you doing? Oh my god. And I look over, she's like, I'm peeing too. And I'm like, get out of here. And then there's fucking. Uh, I kissed a fucking dude for two hours. <laughs> two hours of my, I left a hickey on this guy's neck. <laughs> on his fucking neck. Can you hear me in the back? Cause this shit's important, it'll change your life too. Learn from me. Fucking learn from me. God, it wasn't that bad though. That's what's fucked up. I would kiss that fucker again if I see him. Moves like Jagger, man. Just fucking, oh, you like that? Like, I do like that. I do like that. The whole, the whole. When a dick is staring at you, ladies, I am totally. You have my sympathy. When it's intended for you, it changes you. Like, holy shit, that's going in me. That's going in me. I'm a goddamn man. I'm like, well, let's work through this, dude. Four beers in, and I would have done it. I would have fucked. I'm not, if I would have had a couple Max beers, that guy would have been fucking filing raping dudes, man. My eye was twitching, fucking birds were chirping. I'm like, let's, let's just settle down here, ma'am. Or man, nah. Kiss me again like you did five minutes ago. I ran out of that place like, seriously, like ISIS was chasing me. Like, Holy shit! What had a towel on his head? I'm fucking out of here. My dick was still hanging out, man, when I ran out of the fucking beer. It was a little fun. <laughs> But seriously, the ride home after that was just anything that could happen to me. I turned on 96.3 The Blaze, and all of a sudden, Elton John on repeat is playing. Oh, how weird. Hold me closely, time to be. I'm like, Great, yeah, uh, that's perfect. I'm in no service, and that's the only station that comes on. Awesome. And then I look over this field on my gents, and two stud horses with their wangs out are running in a field like it was spirit or something. I'm like, what the hell? Why? It's November. Put those things away. Jesus, age, rainbows and shit on the sky. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done dating. I'm done. Anyways, that's the best effort I got for you guys. Uh, have low expectations. I love you.
We're going to take a short intermission here. Uh, we got some things to do downstairs, not illegal. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. We're going to keep going, I guess. I totally misread that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Next up, we're going to have Jim again. Here we go. All right. Oh, my God. Let's hear it for Jim. Sexual, bisexual, heterosexual. He'll take it anyway, he's got it. Go ahead and line up, he's ready. <laughs> That's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Hey, so our next one up is one of my favorite improv group members. It's Zane Cosby. Yeah, well, Zane, sit down for a while. I gotta introduce you correctly. Zane is part of my trivial pursuit group in. Montana, here's a little thing, Elk Ridge Brewery, come on down, come on down to Deer Lodge Golden Brewery, oh you guys won't travel that far because you can't drive because you're drunk, anyway, oh, oh, someone's got a piss, he's clearing away, anyway, Zane is my buffer at Trivial Pursuit, he's all pursuit. So they do a little montage of faces, you know. You put Brandon Pitt and Keanu Reeves together, you're supposed to figure out who they are and all that stuff. Well, just the other day, I have no filter at all. So we had some black guys up there, yeah? We had Morgan Freeman and Will Smith. And Well, here he is, the master, the nurse of everything, the one I have to wait on to get my proctology exam, Zane Cosby. Another bite of pizza, and I bite the other side of my mouth. And I'm like, 
like, oh my god, my teeth are against me. The good thing is, I have false teeth. So I went to pull them, and I bit my own fucking finger. And I tried to throw them things, and they were just hooked on. I'm like, oh my god. It's terrible. As a, as a meth head, I just went right back in. And everything was fine. That's not true. My teeth are, are mine. I just can't figure out how, at this age, I continue to bite myself. I, I have a grandson who unfortunately bites my daughter's nipples and we all yell at him, you don't bite. And how do you yell at yourself? You bite your cheek, you go look in the mirror, you don't bite. And yet we do. Fear, fear, fear is a funny thing. It, it shows up at times you never expected. I, I joined the army. I was like, yes, we're going to go out there and we're going to kick ass. Give me every weapon you've got and I'll do something to hurt somebody else. And you park on top of a bomb and you get off and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you guys should drive forward. I'm running. That was scary. It wasn't fearful, it was just scary. Fear to me was before I decided to go off to a foreign country. My wife says, you know, you're going to be gone a long time. I'm like, oh, fuck. She already has a boyfriend. No, she didn't. She just wanted to buy one. I'm like, well, we can buy one. I mean, they make blow-up dolls. I've got three packs. We're, we're in. Go, we'll get you a blow-up. Like, no, nothing blown up. Mine need batteries. Now, who here has been to a porn shop? Not an adult store, not a porn shop. I'm talking cinder block, no windows, one flashing sign on the back side the cops can see, porn shop. You're pretty sure when you pull up that you're going to get jumped, they're going to take everything you own, type porn shop. My wife says, this is where we're going to get what I need. Perfect. Looks just like a bunker. They'll have what you need. I'm thinking, in the back of my mind, I'm a pretty small, average-sized white guy. Something with a double A should take care of everything she needs. We walk up to the door, and like Matt said, it's going into prison. There's, it's a metal door and a slide. Knock on the door, slide opens. What do you need? I need something because my husband's going to be gone. Door opens, you magically walk through. You're getting scanned, everything else. You go in, and it looks like the entire cast of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is inside this building. And there's this little person. At the time, I thought a guy. Receding hairline, about to hear glasses, you know, out like this. What do you guys need? I'm like, oh Jesus, there's this old man that wants to know how big my wiener is. <laughs> so I walk up to the counter, I said, uh, I'm gonna be gone for a while and I need something for the little lady. This lady, I find out, says, Oh sweet Jesus, come with me. Come with me. She gets off of her stool, she's this tall. <laughs> and my wife is this tall, and I'm this tall. My dick hits one, my balls hit the other. We're walking to the back. And it's behind this big curtain. And the hard part is because when you walk into a porn shop, not an adult store, a porn shop, you walk in, there is boobs and twats, and it smells a little musty. So you got three-quarter chub, and as a guy, you're going like... It's, it's all right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna wander over here and cool down. And my wife and the midget walk around me, and and they disappear behind this black curtain. And there, I hear giggling. And I hear my wife say, "Well, I don't know." Now I'm concerned. And it's amazing how fast 
boy parts respond to, I don't know, because it went, and I go running through there, throw open the curtain, and I walk back, and it is the wall of dildos. <laughs> Everywhere you look, minus the curtain you walk in, it's dildos. And if you turn around, over the top, there is the shotgun dildo. <laughs> Holy smokes, don't come in here. little lady that I thought was a man but isn't is like, well, look, honey, he's, he's, a, he's a big boy. Uh, we'll give you this. And and she pulls something out and I'm like, yeah, if we could give her that, I'm could die and she'd still be happy. <laughs> we, we need something a little more American, a little more white, a little more deer lodge. We need <laughs> we need something in the, the triple A area. And uh she goes, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to get her the King Dong. Like, the King Dong? And I'm kind of a, as a kid, I would put together puzzles, and, and, and those puzzles would be 3D puzzles, and you could make little Empire State buildings, and you could have a gorilla run up it. It was the same fucking puzzle, except if you look around the back side, there was King Dong. <laughs> And it had a head that swiveled and it had this weird little grin on it and it had one arm that would just whack like this. And I was like, what? what? What's she gonna do with that? And, and the old lady says to me, I'll tell you what, when you come home, she's gonna be satisfied. I'm like, I don't technically don't want that. I want when I come home that I can still fit in the garage. I'm driving a fucking Prius. You've got a garage with a fucking diesel truck. I need some help, lady. Oh, honey, don't worry about it. And th this little lady about this big crawls up my leg like Yoda. She's sitting up here and she's holding on. She's like, come with me. She taps me on the shoulder and we're walking around. And she's, we're looking at this and that on the wall and I hear way off in the background. Backbeat included. Yes, dear? Like, I found the one I wanted. Um, you did? Because me and the midget that knows all about sex is looking over here. And, and she says, no, I found the one I wanted. So we went over. She pulls out this thing and I'm like, oh, that looks like me with a magnifying glass and the Hubble telescope. <laughs> That's about the right size. And I said, uh, how much does that cost? Lady goes, three hundred dollars. Will that make sure she doesn't cheat on me? No, but it makes sure that you'll have a dentist bill when I'm done. A dentist bill? Yeah, because the second she puts that in, her teeth are going to go. Oh, 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 oh. $300 later, two years, she's still with me. And I will tell anyone out here that needs to go to a porn shop, don't go to a gold store. Best 300 bucks ever spent there. I do love my wife. She stuck with me for a very long time, 18 years. Our, uh, our daughter just turned 18, which was amazing that I didn't kill her. Um, but I have to tell you a story, and, and it's not, it's not Paul, as you guys know him, Dan, honey. This is a true story. It was a lovely Saturday, a, a lot like today. And I'm laying on the couch. How was that Today? Yeah, it's snow today. No, where I'm from. Where's the snow today? Where it's always sunny, buddy. Pay 300 bucks, it's always sunny. I'm, I'm laying on the couch and, and it's beautiful, the sun's coming in. I, I've got a semi-warm cup of coffee that I microwave. I'm sipping it and, and watching the History Channel. Adolf Hitler's out there yelling at people and I'm like, what a fuck. And my daughter comes down 
she's young at the time, and, and she lays down next to me, and, and we're on one of them L couches. I don't know what we call that thing. It's just, it's in the living room. And I didn't pay for it because my wife makes more money than me. And we're watching this, and I'm like, that ain't up, Heather. What a fuck. And down comes my beautiful wife. Down through the stairs. And she comes in, and she hits the bottom of the landing, and, and we're laying there, just enjoying Adolf Hitler, as weird as that sounds. And we haven't done dishes in like five days because we're tired. And we're laying on the couch, getting our energy to go do something. And the flies are buzzing around the dishes, and, and the garbage is molding. And, and my daughter, or my wife, comes down and says, Oh, don't you two look pleasant? And my daughter and I, with our microwave cups of coffee, Oh, we're, we're pleasant. What a lovely morning, mother, says my daughter. You look lovely, wife. Okay. She goes, Do the dishes! <laughs> what the hell happened? My daughter fucking 90 degrees, boom! And she's in doing this. I'm like, so I just lay back and I'm drinking the cup of coffee. She stares over me. <laughs> Remote in one hand, coffee in the other. Can I help you? Did the garbage get taken out? are still right there. I can hear them while I'm watching TV. And, and Marcy's got the dishes, so... Get the garbage out! This is where I lost an entire week of my life, because I looked up in this situation. Remote coffee. And there was silence. Even the flies stopped over the garbage can and turned. And they say, we're going to have a new meal. And I'm laying there. And I think, if I act like I didn't just call her a cunt, it probably didn't happen. has nothing on a lady that has been called that word. <laughs> and I'm a big man. And I'm on the short end of the couch. And my testicles ran so fast up through my throat. I went through puberty in reverse. <laughs> trying to pull and run at the same time. And my brain keeps saying, don't move, play dead. And I thought, I've heard about this with bears and opossums, because it starts with an O. Oh God, we're going to die. And I can feel sweat coming high brow down. And at the same time, I don't look at her. Gentlemen, if you ever do this, just take this advice. Don't look them in the eye. <laughs> and the breathing stopped. I thought, we're in the clear. I could call her anything. We're good to go. And I take a deep, deep 
breath out. Oh, she didn't care. And I sat up and I said, how are you? And I had left my coffee cup on this table. And the next thing I know, three weeks later, I wake up and the doctor says, don't worry, the brain damage is minimal. And I said, did that cunt do that to me? He says, you are going to be the ghost of Christmas future. And I was like, okay, I'll be the ghost of Christmas future. And he says, you have to be flamboyantly gay. And I was like, I can't be flamboyantly gay. And Kelly Cutler says, just go for it. So I thought, Eliza Manelli. Gold Malay top and a boa. So I came up and Merry Christmas to you. You gotta figure this out. I was wearing my job, my uh, wife's low riser jeans. And I pulled her thong all the way up to the crack of my ass. Everybody has seen the thong on a woman. It just looks so much better when they pull it all the way up. And they're showing like a little. That's not a good deal. <laughs> That's not a good deal? You like it. Are you married? Where's your wife at? You don't like how a thong looks on her? You don't know how... He doesn't like a thong out looks on you. I like how sweats look Sweats? You don't like a thong on her? You are in so much fucking trouble tonight. Anyway, Kelly Collar does a lot of uh, theater. He's a musical guy and everything like that. And Kelly Collar will be our next guest. I'm sorry you have to endure his uh, comedy. It's really bad and everything. He does play a guitar this time. He's a good piano player and he plays a magical organ flute. Anyway, here he is, Kelly Cullen. Yeah, Jim Cameron, everyone. Keep it going. That's exactly how you kill a show. Zane is like the Amtrak coming through Chicago. Chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. And then Jim Cameron's the brakes. Fuck you, dude. You, Montana. Also known as the butthole of Montana. I know that because my more intelligent friends from Missoula and Billings told me that. They said, dude, that's the butthole of Montana. Now, if you look at uh, the, the mine over there with the mountains, the carved in mountains, that kind of looks like a butthole rim. And the Berkeley Pit would be the epicenter of the butthole, if that's true. If that's the case, if the Berkeley Pit is the butthole of Montana, we need to see a proctologist. Because that's cold, wet, dark, and a thousand geese just died in it two years ago. Now if a thousand geese 
are dying in your butthole, that's probably a problem. And if Butte's the butthole of Montana, that must mean that rockers like the clitoris. <laughs> if Montana's a female. And I can see rocker being the clitoris because well, I've lost a shit ton of money in Rocker. And I've lost a shit ton of money on strippers. So, um, yeah, clitoris. I'm not like Dan, I don't date chicks with dicks. Um... Slipknot is I want to put one over my neck when you do your stand-up. Uh, I love Butte, yeah. We, my family's from Butte. We love it so much. That's why we moved to Deer Lodge. Two prisons and one jail. That's how much we love Butte. We'd rather be there. I'm just joking. We really do love Butte. Don't get your panties in a twist just because your Butte High Bulldogs lost the state championship. <laughs> Come down. Give yourselves a round of applause, guys. Butte is fucking awesome. Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. It's culture. You have, you have some great people, down-to-earth people. Your history here is deep. Your history here is so deep. It, it could, you could call this place a butthole. Oh! Hey, you so <laughs> Uh, anyways, I got these glasses off of discountglasses.com. I thought maybe they'd make me look a little bit more like Jeffrey Dahmer. I went to uh, Marquette University in Milwaukee, out of high school. I went to Marquette University out of high school. It cost me $30,000 for one year. I got an English 101 credit. I paid thirty thousand dollars to speak a language I've been speaking for eighteen years, and I paid for twenty-eight books that I never read. Thirty thousand fucking dollars. Jeffrey Dahmer is from Milwaukee. That's the only reason I went to school at Marquette, because I'm a sick fiend when it comes to serial killers. Jeffrey Dahmer, this is a true story. He lived, does everyone know who Jeffrey Dahmer is? He like ate penises and brains and shit? Okay, he's a serial killer. Just use your imagination here. Eyeballs, fuck. He'd suck that guy's dick back there if he was alive, but he's not. He got a broomstick shoved up his ass 10 years ago. He's dead. Thanks for bringing it up, sir. He lived two blocks from us. I like to imagine some of Jeffrey Dahmer's conversations with his gay friends. Like, hey, uh, Jeffrey, your skin is so smooth. How, what, is, what is your diet? Uh, well, I find that you have smooth skin when, when you eat the foreheads of three black gay men in the course of two months. Hey, well, apparently no one knows who Jeffrey Dahmer is. <laughs> Because if we, okay, so so like six of us will fuck you then for not laughing, <laughs> cocksuckers. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, I imagine him going uh, like to, to the gay bar in Milwaukee, going up to uh, someone and saying, hey, my name's Jeffrey. Oh yeah, Jeffrey, how you doing? What, what are you into, Jeffrey? Um, I'm into buttholes. <laughs> well, you're in the right place. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I like to put a little um, pet paprika and garlic on it with a little olive oil in a, in a saucepan. I mean, that's kinky, Jeffrey. Yeah, I, I like to rip out buttholes and store them in my freezer and then jerk off to them three years later. That's when the guy's just like, I'm going to move two stools down. I'm not just being dirty, this shit's real. Fucking read a history book. Jeffrey Dahmer's in there, right alongside George Washington. Uh, what's up with the Butte water? Like, Butte has always had a fucking problem with its water. Right? Yeah, when, well, when I was a kid, every time we came here, it was, you couldn't drink out of the faucet. It always had to be filtered through a system, or I think Butte invented bottled water because you couldn't drink it, right? Am I just fucking talking to myself? I mean, this, this is true, right? <laughs> yes, not if you're awake. Is there a problem with pure water? Because I'll move on.
move on to the next thing if there's not. Oh, sir, I'm gonna fuck you in a hotel room. Later. <laughs> just like Jeffrey Dahmer. Will that get a laugh? <laughs> hey, it's funny, everyone talking in the back. I've never done a comedy show during arts and crafts time from preschool. Oh shit, that guy just looked at me. Joking, chill out. It's a fucking joke. <laughs> I like how our bouncer here is Bruno. Bruno, stand up. Look at Bruno here, everyone. Give him a round of applause. That's our bouncer. So if someone charges the stage, yeah, I'm fucked. <laughs> Anyways, pew water. Um, growing up, yeah, we weren't supposed to drink it. They said drink filtered water. You know, you could never drink out of the faucet. So I always ask my dad, why, why can't you drink pew water? Um, and he always liked to over-exaggerate things. He always just made up stories, hyperbole on all this shit. So I'd say, why can't you drink butte water? And he would say, uh, well, you know, Kelly, a beaver died in that crick two years ago. That was it, that was the whole story. Like, really? So for, for 18 years we can't drink butte water because a beaver died where it lives? I still fuck grandma, she died in her apartment. I did it. Wow. Hey, back to Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, we're never getting off of it. We're never getting off Jeffrey Dahmer until we start laughing about Jeffrey Dahmer, okay? Anyways, my dad, yeah, Beaver died in the crib. Uh, it's, that's the title of my next pornography film, Beaver Died in the Crick. Yeah, it's, it's gross. Um, it's about Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, but we have this Aunt Caroline. She was paralyzed. It was so sad. She was paralyzed all her life. And every time you ask my dad, what happened to Aunt Caroline? I'm five years old. Oh, a bag of flour fell off a nine-story building in Butte. There are no fucking nine-story buildings in Butte. It fell off the Hotel Finland. It somehow hit her right in the head. And she lived. Fuck you, Dad. Alcoholic. <laughs> Lisa got one thing from him. Uh, uh, a bag of flour fell off a nine-story building and hit Aunt Caroline in, in the head. That's why she's paralyzed for the rest of her life. Uh, ten years later, Dad, what happened to Aunt Caroline? Oh, you know, she got kicked in the face by a horse. Yeah, paralyzed for life. A couple years later, Dad, what happened to Aunt Caroline? Why is she paralyzed again? This one we're drinking, so we forgot everything anyway. So. She was born with a debilitating disease, and that's why she can't talk or move. She's paralyzed. I'm not joking about this, so, uh, just Tilly, it was about a year ago, we're out, the, we're out in the parking lot, me, Matt, and Tilly, waiting for my dad, and I'm telling these stories to Tilly, I said, yeah, right, Caroline, then he goes, well, what did happen to her? I'm like, I don't fucking know. My dad's never really told us the story. I go, watch, when he gets in the car, when he gets in the car, I will ask him, dad, what happened to Aunt Caroline? And he'll say something that is none of the above, nothing I've said yet. So he gets in the car and I go, hey dad, uh, remember Aunt Caroline? She's paralyzed. What happened to her? Oh, she slipped ice skating and bashed her head off the concession stand uh, bar at the break over there and cheese dip and pretzels. And cheese dip got in her ear and she got the coronavirus. This was a year ago. He was very wise. And that's why she can't talk and when you ask her what her favorite color is, she goes So, Jeffrey Dahmer, um... <laughs> He's laughing so hard because he knows it's true. <laughs> it is true, isn't it? Isn't it, sir? Okay, that means I've been up here for an hour. That's my time, folks. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go with, uh, okay, you know what? I, I think I know this crowd, looking at the other comedians. Let's talk about shitting my pants. Oh! There we go. Hello, toilet humor. Hello, Pews. We found you right there. Oh, fuck you, Jeffrey Dahmer. Get out! Shitting your pants. 
I've shipped my pants three times in my life. I've got ten minutes to tell these three stories really quick. Three times I've shipped my pants. I'll start with the boring story. I'm walking home from the casino because I'm a fucking fiend. It's in Deer Lodge. Lucky Lil, it's two in the morning. I'm a teacher dressed just like this. I got fucking shit running down my leg because I prayed to God and asked him to send me a sign because I lost all of my money on the second of the month. I get paid on the first of the month and I don't get paid until the next first of the month. So I said, God, please. Send me a sign. How do I get my life in order and stop gambling? And all of a sudden, I got that sign. <laughs> Shit my pants, ruined the fucking pants, took all my clothes off in the middle of the street in January, threw them in my neighbor's yard, but that's okay because last I checked, he was a pedophile. <laughs> Uh, I did not learn a lesson because I still gamble very hardly, if that's a word. Trump taught me that word. Hardly, hardly. It's really hardly. Uh, I don't want to be divisive tonight, too, so if I'm offending anybody, let me know. Uh, I'm just going to go into a couple of Trump jokes, uh, talk about why the Second Amendment's bullshit and we need to uh, give up all of our guns to the government. I don't think... I don't think we need any guns as citizens. I think we need to give them all to the government because they will protect us. Um, and then I want to end with a couple of Columbine jokes. I think that would be a good way to end the show. Oh, we don't like Columbine? Fine. Who likes the Holocaust? Let's go with the Holocaust. Yeah, everyone knows the Holocaust. <laughs> Fucking Butte is a bunch of Jew haters, man. <laughs> Okay, back to shit my pants, part two. Um, uh, what is part two? I'm in Chicago. I was, I was a pretty big deal in Chicago. I did stand up like twice, got booed off the stage. I was a pretty big deal. I worked for Blue Man Group. No, I was not a blue man. I cleaned the shitters. Uh, I was a pretty big deal. I made more money in Chicago than I've ever made in my life. And besides this show, we are banking on this show. Guys, we've hit the top. Coke and strippers, man, they don't exist, so the top doesn't exist with those. I have made more money tonight on this show than I could have a really good time at Lucky Lil's for about a half an hour. <laughs> we have hit the fuck. I performed all over the world, people. Dear Lodge, like a hundred times. A hundred times in Deer Lodge. Guys, you know where that is? There's like 3,000 people there. Fuck, I am famous, man. I get asked for my autograph no less than maybe one time in my entire career as a stand up comedian. So, Chicago, I'm shitting my pants. Um, my friends come over, they got two babies, right? And this, true stories, this kid. Shits his diaper, blows it out in my apartment. And it was a nice apartment. So remember, I was a huge stand-up comedian. I performed at two shows. I had a very nice apartment. It cost me $900. Um, hey, fuck it. I'm going down a rabbit hole. Let's go back to shit my pants. The kid shits his diaper. They put him in the bathtub. My bathtub. And I'm, I'm drinking like the shittiest beer you can think of from Wisconsin. Just getting drunk. And I'm like, ha <laughs> fucking shit. And all this shit's going down the drain. Just like chunks, floating chunks of cabbage, it looked like. Uh, <laughs> so, like, fuck you, kid! Making fun of him. A couple hours later, a couple hours later, the kids are gone, I'm sitting at my computer. I finished an entire 30-pack of the shittiest beer I've ever drank in my life, and I ate six corn dogs with cheese whiz on them that I put in the microwave. So, I'm sitting at my computer watching porn or something like that. All of a sudden, ding! God's here. I, I didn't blow out my diaper, I blew out my office chair. Boom! It was like Hurricane Katrina going through my apartment. I, I seriously blew out my office chair. I go into the bathroom, I sit in the bathtub, and I'm pushing my shit down the drain. And I'm thinking, boy, that kid got the last laugh on me. <laughs> That's why I'm pro-abortion. Let's talk about abortion. But let's talk about abortion just for like 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Um, <laughs> shut up, shut the fuck up, dude. Did you see you up here? You get laid 
tonight by that dude that Danny was fucking? Yeah, you'd be lucky. <laughs> story for you, and yes, it's about shit my pants the third time. I am a senior in high school, a time when you should never shit your pants, because you're young. I was out at a kegger all night long. I show up to a track meet at nine in the morning, walking with my friends. All of a sudden, I get that ding from God. Ding! And I'm like, hey guys, hey guys, slow down, this will be funny, listen to this. All of a sudden I get this hot flash through my body like, this is not a normal fart, this is an abnormal fart. I start sweating. You been there before, sir? I start sweating. My friends are looking at me and I, I gotta play it off. Like, it's embarrassing to shit your pants in high school, right? So I'm like, <laughs> hey guys, keep, keep going. I, I forgot my condoms on the bus, something cool like that. <laughs> Or you gotta trap me. I'm like, Go, keep going, keep going. So they go on, luckily, and I just feel like the warmth just. And I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. I only have six or seven hours until the bus leaves from this track meet. So I walk to the bathroom like this, like a nine year old man that threw his back out. And I don't want the Deer Lodge people, I don't want the Deer Lodge people to know that I shit my pants because Deer Lodge people talk like cocksuckers. And I live in Deer Lodge, so I don't want to go to IGA now that you know. And they go, ha ha ha, the kid shit his pants. <laughs> The other people that aren't from Deer Lodge, I was walking like this, I'm like, at this moment, it's probably better if I act retarded than I act like I shit my pants. So I'm just like, heading for the bathroom, right? Heading for the bathroom. So I walk into the bathroom, and I'm like, Jesus, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure something out here, because I gotta go throw the discus in like 10 minutes. So, I fill my underwear with toilet paper. I make a toilet paper diaper, if you will. I'm like, this is the weirdest fucking thing in the world. I walk outside, and I go, oh, okay. Now I'm comfortable. Now I'm okay. I can go on with the day. So I hear Kelly Cutler, Kelly Cutler to the discus ring. Kelly Cutler, Kelly Cutler to the discus ring. I forget all about shit in my pants because that's something I want to leave in my memory. I get to the discus ring, I get up there and grab the discus, throw a couple of throws. I don't remember the meat at all. I don't remember if I had a personal best. I don't remember if I had a personal worst. All I remember is on my third throw with my toilet paper diaper, I come around the corner and I throw the discus, probably something like huge, like 115 feet, which sucks for discus, you fucking idiots. Okay, and then I watch it go, and then I look down, and part of my toilet paper diaper with my shit on it is on the rink. And I'm just horrified. I don't get horrified very often, but I'm like... <laughs> I was like that guy in Deliverance that wanted to fuck that guy like a pig. <laughs> so I come up, so I'm like, I, I gotta get out of here quick. I come up and my eyes lock with the judge with the clipboard. Right here, just my eyes lock and I'm like, oh shit. He saw it, I know it, I know exactly what's going on. He, his imagination's probably worse than what he thinks. We both look down at it. We both look up. We both look down. And when he starts to look up, I just beeline it out of the discus ring as fast as I fucking can. I go past the discus ring, I go past the track, all the way out of the stadium to my parents' car where I open the door and I sit in the back seat for the next four fucking hours till the meet ends. <laughs> Comes to find out, I got fourth in the discus that day. Okay, well, I'm gonna figure you guys out. I'm talking about serial killers and buttholes and diapers and kindergarten and, uh, and yeah. Um, hey, um, anyways, everyone, everyone that's, that's talking, not listening to the show, you like uh, you like wieners in your mouth. Funny really quick, ready? Uh, 
suck my dick. Come on. <laughs> oh, God, they're missing the show. Bunch of fucking... I can't say a word right now because I'll probably go to prison in this day and age. We all hate them. Uh, folks, I love you all. This has been a ton of fun. Thank you for coming out. We're going to take a, a break here. So, Good night. We're Das Fruit. Come out again. Thank you.